What if by the beginning of 2024, you felt confident, organized, and empowered in your business? What if you knew where everything was, your mind was organized, you could find anything you needed in seconds, you knew where every link, subscription, funnel, affiliate, idea, client, and important number that you want to track was located? What if you had a system in your calendar so you remembered everything you wanted to do each week, month, and quarter? And what if you had started documenting your business so that you could hire help and you were ready to scale? Wouldn't that be amazing? I have it for you. It's called Organized Coach Academy, and I am inviting you to be part of this inaugural round of the Organized Coach Academy. Right now, it's 50% off, and there are so many bonuses. I want you to learn all the information and register today so you can go to training.simplysquaredaway.com forward slash OCA for Organized Coach Academy and learn more. DM me on Instagram at Tracy Hoth. If you have any other questions, if you want the link directly, I will communicate with you there. And I look forward to you being a part of this. I want to help you get organized and help you organize your business. Now let's get into this incredible episode. I'm pretty sure you are going to want to save this episode and listen to it at least a hundred (laughs) times. I have Kim Job on the podcast today, and we have such a good conversation. If you struggle with your strategy in your business, if you're not sure what to do each day, if you feel like you're not getting the results that you want, she helps us figure out our business strategy with five decisions. These are so good. So we'll talk about that. Plus, I ask her a lot of questions because I know she's organized and she gives so many little tips, so many little things to do that work. Are you ready to work less, feel more organized and productive, streamline repetitive tasks, and implement systems that allow your coaching business to run smoothly even without you? If so, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Organized Coach Podcast, your go-to source for practical tips and solutions. I'm your host, Tracy Hoth, professional organizer, certified life coach, simplifying expert, and most of all, down-to-earth fellow coach just like you. No matter if you think you're missing the organizing gene, have ADHD, or just love anything organizing, I'm here to help you become an organized coach with a business that works for you. Pull up a seat and let's get started. This is so fun. I get to have Kim Job on the podcast and she was my coach and I just love her and Scott. And so let me, for anyone that doesn't know you, Kim, let me have you introduce yourself. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I've been excited ever since you asked me because we haven't talked for a while and I wanted to catch up with you. So first, I am a wife and a mom, and those are my top priority. They are the love of my life. It's what I live for. We have a big, beautiful, blended family with 10 kids and 10 grandkids and one more that's going to be born in like six weeks. In addition to that, I'm a business coach and I actually coach with my husband, which is super fun. We have kind of a unique blend between us. And we focus on strategy and stories. And we believe that each coach is unique and business strategy is never one size fits all. And we also believe that strategy alone is not enough. You have to clear what's getting in your way before any strategy is going to work. I started my career, my coaching career as an executive at the Life Coach School, where I played a big part in their marketing strategies that made them millions of dollars. So I know a lot about strategy. I know. And that's why I'm so excited to have you on here. I just want to hear everything. The thing that you said that made me like, yes, tell me more. And even on the comment you left, people were like, what do you mean by that? Tell me more was just about keeping strategy simple. And so let's just go ahead and start with that. You said there was five decisions to make to keep your strategy simple. Yeah. So I run a very successful business and I essentially run it from these five decisions. So I'll just tell you what they are and tell you just a little bit about each one. The first decision is what are you selling? And what I like to have my clients do is divide their month in half and sell or invite people to one thing the first half of the month and one thing the second half of the month. 
that keeps it fresh so that you're not always talking about the same thing. Clients aren't, or potential clients aren't always seeing you talk about the same thing, but always keeps you inviting because that's the one thing coaches don't do enough is actually sell. You need to say, hey, I have something for sale. Do you want it? And coaches think they are, but they really, really aren't. So you need to intentionally decide what you're selling and always be selling or always be inviting. And that's the way I like to do it is divide my month in half. So one thing, the first half of the month and one thing the second. I love that. I learned that from you and I still use that. The thing that I loved you taught me was it could be something free. It could be you are inviting them to opt in and get something free or to a low ticket class or your big offer, whatever it is. But that does give you direction just in making that decision. And you could even map out your whole quarter or year. Do you map your whole year out like that or a quarter at a time? No, I I do it pretty much a quarter at a time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's super powerful. It doesn't even have to be like, you could be inviting them to go to a really powerful podcast episode. The point is that you're being loud and proud about whatever you're inviting them to so that they see it. So when you think about that for yourself, do you do like you do that in your email, you do that in your social posts? How else do you plan that out? Yeah, it's just literally wherever I show up in, in that two weeks, I know what I'm selling. So I'm either promoting download this freebie, come to this workshop, schedule a consult, go to my sales page. It could be anything. But I know specifically for that two weeks, this is what I'm sending people to. And what that does is just create a lot of specificity and attention on the one thing. And people are like, oh, yeah, there she's talking about that freebie again. Oh, yeah, she's talking about that freebie again. Or like, oh, that workshop. That's right. Oh, that workshop, that workshop, that workshop. And we feel annoying on our end. We're like, I feel like all I'm doing is talking about the workshop. But the people who are watching appreciate it. And like, that is how you grow is you, you feel a little bit annoying. That's so interesting. And I'm (laughs) laughing because this week, I mean, for the next two weeks, I'm selling the client tracker. I'm launching it in this digital product that I have that helps me manage my clients. And it's so funny because I sent an email out and then I was like, you know, some people bought and I was super excited. Then the next day I thought, oh, I got to say something again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's like the fourth day and I'm, and I'm like, Oh, I got to say something, but I am going, yes, Tracy, you have to do that for two weeks because people need to hear. They probably missed all the other times you mentioned it. So it's good. Yeah. Or you say it in a different way. And so it lands when it didn't before, like mm-hmm. lots of ways to keep saying it. I always say, shout your offer from the rooftops. And if you don't want to, then you need to get coached on why you don't want to. Mm-hmm. So. so good. Okay. That's decision that's number, one. number one. Okay. Decision what's number, number two? De- decision number two is what free offer are you promoting? So even when you're not actively inviting them to your free offer, because that's not what you're doing for this couple of weeks, you always want to have something free that they can opt into. So in your Instagram bio, wherever, so that they can get on your email list. And the reason you want them on your email list is so that you can reach out to them and don't have to rely on them seeing you somewhere. That's why email is so powerful and so important. Plus you own it more than you own your social media feeds, right? That was a question that came into my head on the first step is what if you're a new coach and you don't really have other than one thing to sell, then to set up your funnel, you would need something free or any strategy in your business. You need something free to get them on your email list. So that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something you're promoting then is in that step number two, or is it just that you have something that you're, you have them to opt in with? It, it's so that you always have something that they can opt in, in the background, but sometimes you're promoting it. Sometimes it is the thing that you're selling. Mm-hmm. And where, where I tell coaches to start, because they're always like, what do I do? Like they get so caught up in making it perfect. One of my favorite concepts in business is for now. Everything you do in Mm. business is for now, your freebie for now, your price for now, your offer for now, your landing page for now, your website for now. It is literally all for now. And we spend so much time trying to make the right, perfect decision. And instead, just move, like just move forward. That is one thing that we really, in the story work that we do, we want you to notice what is stopping you. So when you stop in your business, that's a sign. Start like alarm bells should go off. You need to pay attention when you want to stop. What I tell coaches to do if they're stuck on this is pick one tool 
your favorite tool that you would teach every single client, regardless mm -hmm. of what they come to you for, because coaches really get caught up in niche in the beginning. They're like, well, my freebie has to match my niche. It doesn't because pick one favorite tool that you're going to teach regardless of your niche, teach that. And then I say film just like a two to three minute video and then give them a PDF that reminds them the steps of how to use the tool. That's a really powerful freebie because it allows you to follow up with them and say, hey, did you download the tool? Have you used the tool? Here's how I use the tool. Here's how a client used the tool. And you just keep reminding them what they got from you because we download so many freebies <laughs> that we forget what we got from who. But if you keep reminding them about that powerful tool that you taught them, then they remember you. Oh my goodness. That's so good. Yeah. As I'm interviewing different coaches, I'm like, Oh, I'm feeling confirmed in this. <laughs> you know? Or yeah. I'm like, Oh, yes. I need to use that. You know, it's so fun. This is such yes. a fun thing to do. Okay. What's your freebie? So I actually love creating freebies. They're very easy for me to do. I'm a content creator at heart. So I create freebies all the time. And one of the things I'm actually known for is I have a big email list. I have 50,000 people on me, my email list. And it's because I create a lot of freebies. Mm. Like anything I think of that I can create a freebie, I create it. And then I sell it, sell it, you know, invite people to it for a week or a few days. So, and that's why people keep following you and keep coming back because they're like, Oh, Kim gives us so many good things to use. Yeah. So yeah. many useful tools. Yeah. And they're just like so easy and fun for me to create. It, it's one of my strengths. That's one of the things I want all my clients to do is lead with your strengths. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my strengths. It's very easy for me to create content, to create that type of thing. So I do it. I love how you asked that for a coach to think about like, what is easy for them? And for me, it'd be like digital organizing. I can teach you that. I want to teach you that. I want everybody to have that tool right. so that they can feel better about finding things yeah. you know, on their yeah, computer. So, so often coaches like want to be the same as everyone. And I say, be different. Like you were um, amazing at things before you ever became a coach. Those are the things that make you different. And those are the things you need to shine a light on, not your certification, not your trainings. It's literally the things that you have always been, mm -hmm. the things that have always made you, you, that is your magic. And when you turn that up, your success takes off. So. Yeah. It's turning that up. I'm like, Ooh, I've been really thinking about this or maybe struggling just in certain things, like turning that up, just being okay with it. Yes. People need that. They want that. They need to, to have me turn that up to be yeah. the best coach that I can be. Yeah. That that's one of the patterns that we would help you identify in the story work that we do in our outside the story program. It's just a block that you don't want. You have discomfort being visible, mm -hmm. but it's a block. Yeah. But you can dissolve it. <laughs> so yes. super forward. Okay. Oh, I love so, it. Okay. So number three. Number three is what one form of marketing will you focus on? And I'll start with a little caveat because every time I say this, people are like, well, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Can I be on both? My answer is yes. You can be on both if you already know how to do both and they're already working, then you can be on both. But if you're on 10 and you're trying to figure them all out, no. <laughs> Pick one, <laughs> pick one and pick the one that you like, pick the one that you want to be on, not the one that's hard for you to learn. Again, lead with your strengths. Don't like go do the hard thing, go do the easy thing and your business is going to be easier. So do what you're already good at. If you're good at writing, write. If you're good at video, do video, like do what you're already good at because, and then you can grow from there, but start there. The resistance that came up in my head is what if you're good at something, but your clients, you think they're on something else. Do you just trust that you're good at that? You're going to attract them there. Yeah. I, I literally trust that I was given the gifts I was given mm -hmm. for a reason. And when I use them, I'm an open conduit for things to come through. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not, I'm not as open. It doesn't mean I'm not going to do good in the world and, you know, provide change for people. But when I really stay in my lane, in my gifts, that's when I do the the most good. I love that. And it's been fun to watch you like branch out from regular things yeah. to try these different things that you're either working through or interested in. It's been so neat to see like, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want and use your own gifts and struggles yes, <laughs> to create something to help people. Yeah. Like literally, if you have a spark of desire, you were given it for a reason. 
Mm-hmm. Those I, they're like seeds, fo- plant them in your heart and follow them because they are so powerful. So number one is what are you selling? Number two is what free offer are you promoting? And number three is what form of marketing are you focused on? And I just want to say like, that could be social media, but it could also be like, I have one client who her one form of marketing is she just speaks on podcasts. She just does podcast interviews. I have another who her one form of marketing is she does a monthly workshop. That's the only marketing that she does. Mm -hmm. I have another one who only does word of mouth. So like, it doesn't have to be people immediately think marketing and think social media but it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be that. So pick what you like and what, like, what sounds fun to you? That's my number one question to clients is what are you most excited about in your business right now? That's what you should be doing because potential clients, belief, excitement, love will never be more than your own. So you have to love what you're doing. And then you literally become a magnet and people want it because you want it. Yes. I'm like, preach it, Kim. (laughs) Where people are going to re-listen to this just to hear you're so encouraging. Okay. That's really good. And I'm glad you mentioned that too, because it could look like. However you need, need or want to look. Yeah. Yeah. And for a while I was out speaking. So I spoke a lot and then got emails when I spoke and I love speaking. So it was a really great way for me to build my email list. Yeah. So good. Like some coaches teach, like you always have to be outside your comfort zone. And I actually believe you can grow your business faster inside your comfort zone, which is why I say lead with your strengths. So like you did what you were already good at. You did speaking and it pushed you further. Mm -hmm. You do have to do some things outside your comfort zone. Occasionally you have to step outside it and it's uncomfortable. So I always say step outside it, then come back in for a cuddle. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Okay. Okay. Anything else on that? The main key there is just lead with your strengths. Do what you want to do in your business. Trust the decisions you want to make. Do this form of marketing that you want to do. Try the ideas that you have, like literally trust yourself. Yes. That's just making me like think, I'm going to go for a walk and ask yeah. myself, <laughs> what is it? That's fun. Well, that's why I started the podcast really is to get better at talking, <laughs> to get better at talking through the concepts that I want to teach and that I think are helpful. Okay. Decision number four is what one project will you complete this month? I say this month, but it could be, I actually do this month, this week, this quarter. I love that question all across the board. People always ask me how I get so much done and how I get so much done is I work on one thing at a time. Like literally I pick one project, I do it all the way. And then I do another project all the way. And I move my business forward and I get a lot of things done. It's really easy for me to get things done. So do less, but do it better. How are you reminded of the one thing that you chose? And then the other question, so I don't forget, is how do you not get distracted? I guess that may be kind of the same thing, but I think like halfway through the month, it gets hard and then you're like, oh, this is a better idea. I have a monthly dashboard that I fill out at the beginning of each month and it has three columns. It, It has the first column is fulfilling. That's just what I've already sold. So I put there basically what I know I have to show up for because I've already sold it. Mm -hmm. The second column is what I'm creating. That's my project. So I pick a project and then I literally divide it into four little mini projects. So I know I'm working on this piece in week one, this piece in week two. So I do that at the beginning of the month. And then the third column is what am I selling? So that's where I divide the month in half and pick two things. So that's just the three. That's literally how I run my business is from those three columns, which is very simple. But then with the monthly project, just each week, I know what my focus is that week. And then at the beginning of the week, I decide what will be complete by Friday. And I write it down. I actually write it on. I love index cards. So I write it on an index card. (laughs) What will be complete by Friday? That like cements it in. It's like my commitment. It's manifesting it. It's like the first step in the manifestation process is writing it down. I'm creating the bucket for it to happen. I don't follow like Monday hour one or anything like that. I don't put all my tasks on my calendar, but what I do put on my calendar is one hour of project time. And I consider that to be an appointment, just like a coaching call would be an appointment. And I don't miss it. You do that every day. I do that every day. And during my project time, I get this card out. I know what I have committed to be completed by Friday. I write down what will be done at the end of the hour. And just making that commitment, I stick to it. I don't get distracted. So it's really powerful for me. And and then like at the end of the week, I have like the commitments that I made and they're all done. And it's just like really powerful. (laughs) So many people would be like, well, I only got one of those commitments done. It's not really powerful, but it's committing to doing it. 
it's it's committing to do it to, to doing it and also if i didn't get them done like say i didn't get my mini project done that week i don't care i literally move it forward mm-hmm. it's not a problem ever it's not a problem because i trust myself to work when i feel aligned and want to work and i don't work when i don't and i trust that it will all be fine and work out and it literally is fine and works out like the the only rules that we have are the boxes that we put ourselves in mm-hmm. Like I'm the one who picked the project and gave the deadline. I can move it. No problem. I love that freedom. So can you give us examples of projects? Like what yeah. you would say for a month? Yeah. So th- this is a common one that coaches would have is they want to set up an email funnel. So the steps of that could be like in the first week, maybe they do research. They decide what email system they're going to use. Maybe they do research and decide what they're going to do for their freebie. In the second week, they do all the designs. So they create the freebie, write the freebie, all of that. And then in the third week, they set up all the tech, set it all up and test it and all of that. And then in the fourth week, they could write their follow-up email sequence or they could they could write their sales plan to, to promote the new freebie. But something that each week has like a specific focus so okay. that by Friday, you can say, yeah, I did that thing. And that just feels good. And then at the end of the month, you literally have a new asset in your business because you have a new email funnel set up. And like that feels so good to invite people into because you know they're being supported and taken care of. Then you feel confident shouting your freebie from the rooftops because you know once they come in, they're going to be warmed up and nurtured through your email funnel. And so you just feel way more confident selling. Yeah. So everyone's going to be running out and getting index cards. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll be thinking of Kim. I'll tell you my other favorite index card tip then. I have my favorite to-do list is called my 48-hour list. And I write it on Sunday evening and everything on there I commit will be done by Tuesday evening. And it always is. And most of my business is done by Tuesday evening from that 48-hour list. So. Oh, so what do you mean? The, you write down like what? Just like it, it, anything that I want done in, in my business that week. So So say like I need to follow up with clients. I need to follow up with someone who asked about something. I need to send a referral to someone just like every thing that I need to do. And I get done in the first 48 hours. They do say like, try to get as much as you can done in the first action you take. So that would kind of be using that concept. Then on Wednesday, when things are popping up, do you save those for the next Monday and Tuesday or do you just... I also have... I have lots of, well, I have, a lot, all your secrets. I have a lot of different strategies that work for me, but one of the things I have as a list that I just call Friday tasks, that's my hmm. gather everything. And it's like my personal life and business, but like little tiny things that I have to do that you just those things you're like, I need to do that, but I don't want to stop and do it. So like make a phone call, send the email, just like all those little things that gather. So I have one hour that I call my Friday tasks hour. And so everything, every little thing that comes up, I write it on an index card with Friday tasks at the top. And then I do those on Friday morning. I just love how they all have names. This is my 48 hour list. This is my Friday tasks. (laughs) (laughs) I just sound like such a concept, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Okay. So number four was. Uh, What one project will you complete this month? Okay. Yes. And then number five. You're always moving your business forward. Just one thing I want to say there, like. I have clients come to me and they're doing like 20 things in their business and they feel overwhelmed and they should feel overwhelmed because you don't need to be doing 20 things in your business. So I had one client come, she was doing lots. I said, pick three, any three. She picked three. She had her first five figure month. She's been booked ever since because she constrained on three. So what we do is we want to take just a couple steps on, on 20 things. And instead, if you picture you're here and success Island is across from you, I want you building one bridge all the way to the Island. And you can build another bridge. And instead, people want to build 20 bridges, but take just a couple steps on each. And that doesn't get you to success as fast. Yeah, I always use that. And I don't know who I heard this from, but the soccer field, if you had 10 balls, you were, you know, dribbling down the soccer field to the goal, you would be running all over the place. Yes. Such a good visual. I love that one. I haven't heard that one. I like that even better. (laughs) No, I like (laughs) success island. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And that, that was good. Thanks for sharing that too. Yeah. Decision five, which is the most important decision is what one message will you share? And it doesn't mean you have to share it forevermore, but I want you to pick one and share it for a while. (laughs) A while depends on you and different things, but for a while, like probably for a quarter, 
for three months, take one powerful message and share it from every angle that you can think of. Ooh. Eventually you do get yourself to one message. And that's, you, you've, you've heard me say, what are you here to say? What are you here to say? Do you know? <laughs> Getting organized is freedom. Like it brings you freedom from that negative self-talk, that discouragement, that wasting time, trying to find what you need, all of that to have that is freedom in your business. And then you can go get fully booked or go do and create what you want to create. Not that you're waiting for that to get organized, to do that, but in that you will be free to be able to do that better. I think. Yeah. That's so good. And what's so powerful about that one message, if clients don't know the answers, I have them start here because it will help guide what everything else you do. It, it will guide what you're selling. It will guide what your free offer is. It will guide what marketing you're doing. That one message that you're sharing. And when you have your one message, then you just share it from every angle. You can answer the simple questions of when, what, why, and how, right? Like, why is it so important? But then just share your examples, client examples, and you just literally keep telling people the message over and over and over. So my one message is that you can't change what happened to you, but you can choose what happens next. So that's mm -hmm. my one message. Scott, my husband who coaches with me, his one message is you have an inner champion and I will help you find it. Oh, I love that. We miss Scott. <laughs> tell, tell Scott, hello. <laughs> It, it's oh. it's, it re it's really powerful when you have that one message and you think about that one message as you're creating your content, you always come back to it. This is why I'm giving you this tool. This is why I'm telling you about this tip because it creates freedom when you do this first. Mm -hmm. so you're and always I'm even, coming back. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's so good for me to think about that from different angles because, and people are more organized than they think. And they have all these thoughts that are keeping them from feeling organized when they really are. They just have all that negative stuff in their yeah, mind. So. so even showing them how they already are creates freedom. Yes. So powerful. So yeah. good. Okay. Those five decisions. I love it. Yeah. Very and, simple and yeah. motivating. Like as you're telling them to me, they're very motivating. Yeah. I like to think of them as anchors. Anytime I get overwhelmed in my business, I'm like, what am I doing next? I'm like, oh, that's right. Those are my five anchors and I pull myself back to them and they really keep me solid and rooted in my business. And they are very simple, but they do keep you moving forward. And often clients are like, is that really enough? I'm like, it is enough. I run my business from it and it is enough. And a very simple strategy that you follow is way better than a complicated one that you don't. No. Oh, yeah. Which is the sure. thing for you, right? A system that is simple that you will follow is way better than a complicated one that you're not going to. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned in, while well, we were talking like mixing strategy and story. So that's what you and Scott do. Tell me a little bit about that. And then I have a bunch of personal questions. Other questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what we found is like, I love business. This is my fifth online business and I am good at growing businesses, but I realized that I have grown them through striving and struggle and pushing, and that's not sustainable long-term. So I realized that that was a coping mechanism. That was actually a pattern and it was getting in my way because it wasn't sustainable long-term. So through, I've done all sorts of work. Like, you know, you did my, my soul stories program and I've been dipping into like personal healing, figuring out what's getting in my own way, what's holding me back. Because I've always known, like I have gifts, I have talents, but I've also known that I held myself back, that I was capable of more than I allowed myself to do. And so I've always been trying to figure that out. And I think I've figured it out now. And so what we help clients do is see what is actually stopping them. Strategy is an answer, but it is not the first answer. Strategy is kind of like, until you've cleared out what's in the way, it's like rearranging the furniture in your room. It feels good for a while because you're trying something new, but then the same old patterns come up and get in your way. So that's why our new tagline is where story meets strategy, because once you clear your stories and what's in your way, then strategy is fuel. Before that, mm -hmm. it's kind of noise, which is why, also why we greatly simplified how we teach strategy, because people are going to want strategy regardless, even if they still have stories. So if we start you with very, very simple strategy, it helps us see and you see what's in your way. If you're only working on these five things, mm -hmm. you're going to quickly see when you want to stop 
or which one confuses you or which one you feel nervous about. So it, it, simplifying the strategy helps them see what's in their way. And then once they see what's in their way and clear it, the strategy is literally like putting your foot on the gas. Oh my goodness. So by story, you mean the stories that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And the patterns but, that we have. Yeah, the, the, the stories you tell yourself. And there are even things in your body that are like energetic blocks that are developed before you're seven that then run the rest of your life if you aren't aware of them. But once you become aware of them, you have so much freedom and power. That sounds amazing. When's your next opening? <laughs> <laughs> Our next session starts September 22nd. And it, it is like so life-changing. It's more powerful than we even know, than we even knew it would be. So every coach that's come through has said there was my life before outside the story and my life after it. It's life-changing. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing. And yes, everyone that's listening, go get some of Kim's freebies. And if it, this comes out after, get on our email list so you can join yeah. the next one. Okay. I'm curious. You are organized. I'm guessing you're pretty an organized person. Yeah. Okay. Now you've seen behind the curtain in a lot of businesses. What do you find is the messiest part or needs the most attention? Let's just say. I don't know if it needs the most attention, but what I wish coaches would do. How about that? <laughs> Maybe that's the question. <laughs> because it would help them. I wish that they would start content banks so that they can draw from their own content when they're creating sales pages, writing emails, creating social media posts, because it's magic when you can do that. What is that? What do you mean by that? What does it look like? I want you to create three different content banks. One is for new ideas. So that's just new ideas that you get when you're listening to things, when you see things and things you're learning from your own coaching. Just keep those um, in a content bank so that you can write new posts from those. The second content bank I want you to have is um, a sales content bank. So that's any sales copy that you ever write, any marketing copy. So emails that you write to launch something, social media posts that go with the, that same launch. So that's like all your launch sales content. I want you to have a content bank for that. And then the third content bank I want you to have is an evergreen content bank. And those are the topics that you talk about over and over and over because you can use those over and over and over. You don't need to always be writing new content. So your evergreen content, when you write something and it's like some one of your pillars or whatever, drop it in that bucket. And then you know, those are things you can go draw from on the days that you don't want to write something new. Just go draw from your ever, evergreen content and repost something. So is that like a folder that has Google Docs of what you've written? Or is that like a sentence that summarizes what you wrote? I start them just with a sentence. Okay. People always say, where should I do this? And I say, wherever you're keeping notes already, that's the best place to start. For a lot of people, that's just on their iPhone. You can make three folders on your iPhone notes, mm -hmm. in your iPhone notes and do it there. I do it in Notion. You could also do it in Google folders. Just wherever you're, what you're already using, use that because then you're going to use it, right? Yes. And for me, I, I use the idea tracker and I sell the idea tracker. It's only $9, yeah. but that'd be perfect. So one of the yes. tabs at the bottom would be whichever bank, yes, <laughs> bank perfect. number one, two, or three. Yep. And I don't know if people know, but you can right click and hide the, the note behind it. So you could put the main sentence, but you could even put the whole entire, yeah, you know, post email or, or, yeah, yeah, post remember, behind yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and actually a fourth bank that I hadn't really thought of is a storytelling bank. Like your own stories at the end of the day, Think through your day and think, did anything happen to oh. me today that I could use as a story? Yeah. That's or good. or happen with a client that could use as a that I could use as a story, or happen on a coaching call that I could use as a story because storytelling is really powerful in your selling. So start collecting your own stories because they're powerful. Okay. The other thing that I learned from you that you I think share all the time is your days of the week. Like you are organized in that you have themes for each day of the week. Yeah. It helps me because it gives it a bucket. So I know that each thing in my business is going to happen. So on Monday I do marketing and client work. I follow, do review things for clients, stuff like that. On Tuesday, I coach. On Wednesdays, I do content. And on Thursdays, I coach. And then on Friday, I just do that one hour, that Friday tasks hour that we talked about before, my little tasks that I collect throughout the week. And I love too, that if anybody doesn't know, you and Scott kind of plan your month. <laughs> 
<laughs> we do. Yeah. We, we work the first three weeks of the month and we take the fourth week off. Sometimes we travel together. Sometimes we use that for a project. On the weeks that we do a project, we still often travel because I work way better away from home, but we will like dig in and really get a project done. So like we'll create a curriculum or we'll, we'll do something big, but we go away to do it. And it's like fun. That's so fun to have someone to do all that with, you know, it is super fun. Okay. Anything else that stands out? You want to share thoughts? Just business doesn't have to be as hard as you're making it. If you feel overwhelmed, don't push through. My favorite thing to tell clients is when you don't know what to do, go to your favorite thing. Don't do your business. Go do your favorite thing because then you're going to feel refreshed. You're going to get new ideas. You're going to feel creative. And and don't worry. People are like, well, I'll never want to come back. I'm like, you will. <laughs> the, the momentum always comes back. And you have to trust that. You have to trust that you can go take a break and that mo- the momentum will come back and it will. So just make it easier than you're making it. It doesn't have to be hard. When you're pushing, stop pushing. Pay Love attention it. to the things that are pulling you in your business and don't push so much. Perfect closing. So how can people find you if they want to reach out, get on your list? You can find me at coachingkim.com. The latest, greatest updated freebies and stuff you can always find on Instagram. And I am Kimberly J coaching on Instagram. Okay. Thank you so much for taking time. It's been so so inspiring and educational and useful. Good reminders. So fun. Always good to talk to you. Thanks for listening to the episode. Please share this episode with your coaching bestie and tag me on Instagram at Tracy Hoth. And of course, I would be so grateful if you could subscribe and leave a written review on Apple Podcasts. It's the number one way you can thank me. To thank you, go grab the file naming formula cheat sheet and watch the workshop replay, Three Secrets to Organize Your Digital Files. Both are linked in the show notes. Until next time, have a beautiful week.